to another episode of Mr. Martin and Mr. T's lab prep videos. We're going to be working with the, the relationship between what, Mr. T? Uh, resistance, current, and voltage. Right. Resistance is the relationship between potential and current. And that's Ohm's law. So here's what we got. We have, shall I go through here? Yeah. All right, so we got our batteries. Batteries. All right, battery holders. Battery holders. A switch. A switch. Some resistors. Some resistors. Nice. Nice color bands there. Mm-hmm. Uh, wires. Mm-hmm. With alligator clips. Uh, ammeters. Ammeters, this is a new thing. We're probably going over it today, maybe tomorrow. So if you haven't learned what an ammeter is yet, you will. But this is how we're going to measure the current. Look that it has a capital A there, units for current. Okay. And multimeter. There's multimeter, right. This multimeter right here, we can set it up like an ammeter so that it'll measure the current too. So if you don't happen to have these three ammeters, you'll be able to use this as one of them. This we're going to use to measure the potential across any of the resistors. And we're going to show you how to do that. Big thing to know, Mr. T, what is it about ammeters and voltmeters? The way they're wired into the circuit is important. Um, so ammeters need to be wired in series, mm -hmm. and voltmeters need to be wired in parallel. Mm -hmm. Very important. Very important. Why yeah. is that, sir? Well, uh, you can cause some problems in the circuit, for one, mm -hmm. um, and you won't get accurate readings either. Yeah, agreed. If you happen to put a ammeter in parallel, you'll burn it out real quick. Mm -hmm. You can't stop the current. Current won't slow down. It'll be going really fast. It's a, and problem. It's a big problem. It's a problem. And then if you put a voltmeter in series, you're not going to find any potential difference at all. Because you'd be trying to measure at a point. Yeah. Which we don't measure potential difference at a point. Right. Difference is a difference over a certain amount. Cool. All right. So we need to build this circuit right here. It looks like a battery, switch, an ammeter. That's a symbol for ammeter. Then a resistor. Then it looks like we got a branch. Looks parallel to me. Two ammeters, two resistors, all connected back. So. I think uh, when we come back, we'll have it all built up. All right. Cool. And we're back. We've got the circuit constructed. But before we do that, we need to learn how to figure out the color codes on the resistors. So let's grab our three resistors. There is one resistor. And here's another. Oops, these alligator clips are hard to get. There you go. And the third one's right here. And we got a guest. There's Mr. Z. Let's see here. This resistor is looks like red, red, brown to me. It's kind of tough to see. Be. Yeah, I'm looking at it right here. The yeah. the um, the focus isn't working too well on the camera. There, you, there you can see it: red, red, brown, and gold. Okay, so right here we've got an example. First band is red. Second band is red. Third band is brown, and the last band is gold. Gold will always be your last band. So we're going to go over here to a four-band resistor to figure out how to use this. So the first band is red, and two is going to be our first number. So we'll plug it right in there, first number, two. The next band is red, third band number two. There it is, two again. So there we go, two. The third band is your multiplier. So let's see here, third band is brown and the multiplier of 10. There it is. And then the fourth band is the tolerance. 
that's the uncertainty. Let's see here. It's gold. Gold is a 5% uncertainty. So there we have it right there, 5%. And now what we do is we go 2, 2, that's 22, times 10 is 220, and then plus or minus 5%. Mr. T, do you have your calculator? I do. Cool. Could you do 5% of 220? I uh, get 11. 11. Okay. So we'll do 220 plus or minus 5%, which is 11. Oh, there we go. So that's the resistance of a red, red, brown gold resistor. 220 plus or minus 11. So if you had trouble following that, just rewind and try again. And now Mr. T and I are going to go through the next set of our resistors. So we already have one done. We happen to have a red, red, brown gold resistor. So Mr. T, do you have a pen on you? I do. Fantastic. Okay, so Mr. T, I'm going to let you do the next few. What colors do you have there? All right, so this looks like uh, we have brown, green, brown, Okay. Gold. Brown, green, brown, gold. So All let's right. see. So brown. One. Okay. Green. Five. Mm-hmm. And brown. Third band. One. Are you you're working with a five? Oh, you're doing it again, aren't you, Mr. T? You're so good at teaching the students how those mistakes that they like to make. Mm -hmm. Let's see. If we're doing a five band, the third band is this. However, if we're doing a four band, there it is. Yeah. third band is the multiplier. Right. So you're multiplying by... Ten. Okay, so you said it's one five. One five. Fifteen times ten. Times so ten. Should we fill this in here? Let's, let's do it. Let's uh, fill this in. So we have brown and green and brown. And the fourth, as you said, will be gold. Yeah, gold will never be your first one. Right. Okay, so uh, we had brown, which was one. Green, which was five. And then brown again, which for the four bands is a multiplier of 10. And the same plus or minus 5%. Okay. All right. So we take 1, 5, 15 times 10, 150. Cool. And then we need to... Yeah, I can't do, I can't do 5% of 150 in my and, head. And just to be safe, even if you... I like that idea, just to be safe. Plug it in the calculator. It doesn't take long. You get 7.5. Cool. There you go. So 150 plus or minus 7.5 ohms for a brown, green, brown, gold. Cool. Exactly. Yep. And the third one, what, what's the third one we have? Brown, red, brown. Brown, red, brown. Yep. Okay. So let's uh, see. Brown is one, red is two. For a three band, a four band, excuse me, for a four band resistor, the third band is your multiplier, and we said it's brown again, and then gold. So that should be one, two, ten. All right, let's see what Mr. T's got. One, two times ten is 120. Nice. Plus or minus 5% for your gold tolerance band. And 5% of 120 is. Six. All right, so we have 120 we plus or minus 6 ohm resistors. So we've got a 220 plus or minus 11, a 150 plus or minus 7.5, and a 120 plus or minus 6. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to have to mark these. So R1, make sure we label R1, R2, R3. Mr. T, which one are you going to make R1? Uh, we can just start with in order here, the top one. Okay, red, red, brown, red, gold red, brown. is going to be R1. Yep. And then I guess R2 will be brown, green, brown, gold. Mm -hmm. And then R3 is going to be brown, red, brown, gold. Great. All right, and we're back. Here's our Ohm's Law data sheet. We've got resistor number one here, red, brown, or excuse me, red, red, brown, gold. Resistor two, brown, green, brown, gold. Resistor three, brown, red, brown, gold. And then, if I were anybody in this class, I'd put down my resistances next to my resistors. Okay, the next thing we've got to do now is we've got to measure the potential difference of each of our D batteries to make sure that they're actually 1.5. They say they're 1.5, but we don't know for sure until we check. And we've got to measure the actual potential difference of the 9-volt battery.
All right, Mr. T, can you show us how to do that using our cool sure. voltmeter? Okay. All right, so start with one. Okay. Start with one detail. Oh, you don't even have to do that, do you? And now you can you just, don't, actually. You yeah, can just, you're right. So let's Here, I'll, I'll, hold, I'll hold that so it doesn't roll out of all all right. the place. So as you can see, this thing can look kind of confusing. Zoom in a little. Yep. Okay. Big, uh, big turntable here. There's a lot of different options. But what are we looking for? We're looking for voltage. So you want to stay in this little area right here. Nice. Now, we have an idea of what we should get as a reading in the range. We want to make sure we're above that. So you want to make sure that the setting you have it on is above your expected value. Now, we're expected to be around one and a half volts for one of these D-cell batteries. So we'll put the setting on two. Nice. And, and we should be all set with that. All right. OK. So let me uh, set that up right there. Okay. We have our red, which is the positive. Okay. And we have our black, which is the negative. Okay. So we get the red to the positive terminal, black to the All negative All right, red terminal. to the nubby, because nubby is always positive. That's right. And okay, so this isn't quite 1.5 volts. It's 1.7 for about 1.75 volts. Okay. All right. So that's Good one. Yeah. So let's write that down. 1.75 volts for the first battery. Okay. So this will be battery number one. We'll put it over here for battery number one. Okay. okay I'll hold the next one. Got the nubby side for the positive side. This one's also a little more, 1.7, and it'll it'll jump based on whether or not you're making contact and whatnot. There we go. 1.76 or so, yeah, about 1.76. So that's number two. Okay. Here's number three, and I've got these all in order, so that way I don't. Let's see. 1.8, 1.8 volts for this one. Okay. Okay. So, here is my ordered set. Number one, number two, number three, and then the last one. Notice how Mr. T is doing it. One on the positive, one on the negative. Red on the positive. This one's 1 1.7, about 1.75. Mm -hmm. So, they're they're each a little bigger than uh, than what we expected. It's good we measured. Okay. And then let's check the 9 volt. Nine volt. So let's see here. On the 9 volt, this side, the smaller side, remember the nubby, the smaller side, and it's labeled, see, there's positive, there's negative. Red goes on the positive side. Oh, my oh, gosh. What's going on? What's going on? Well, 9 volts. We're expecting a ah, higher number. Higher number. So we need to change the setting. It said OL. That means overload. Yeah. So so here we'll change it change to it 20. 20. Okay. So and now we'll try it again. Positive, negative. Okay. And it's coming up to be 11 volts. 11.1. Okay. So these okay. are little little more than what we expected. That's all right. Okay. Okay. So we marked them all because yeah, they say they're a certain number, but we need to be sure. And now when we start putting them in to the circuit, we'll be able to measure the potential difference across each resistor and record the, sur the current. All right, I guess the next thing to do, Mr. T, is to uh, put, the, put the batteries in, huh? Yep. You All right. Let's do it. All right, so we're back. And we were a little confused about those numbers. They seemed a little too far off. And after further investigation, what did we find, Mr. T? Uh, we found that the 9-volt the battery that was in the multimeter mm -hmm. um, was low. It was low, okay. Was low, so that Giving us faulty probably readings. was causing the readings to be high. So this is a new battery, actually, that we're just putting in. Yeah, we tested it. It's reading 9.2 volts. Okay. And we should be all set. The one we took out was measuring um, just under 8 volts. Okay, yeah. And we actually have another one set up, so you don't need to see us right. put it together. We're going to just redo all of our data again because that's what good physicists do. So here, I'll hold battery number one again. All right, and we are and this one's on proper the, the setting. proper setting. Positive to the nub. 
All right, 1.48, that is much closer to 1.5, like that. I'm going to put this over here for All right. battery number one. Here comes battery number two. 1.49 about, like that. So there's battery number two. Okay. Nice, 1.5. About five zero. So battery number three. One, two, three. And then here okay. comes number four. It's a good thing we checked. 1.4, about 1.45. Awesome. And then finally, the nine volt again, positive side. It's marked. Red goes on positive. Whoa, yeah. Overload. Oh, yep. Yeah. Good All thing. Right. We were able to see that again. Not nine volt battery, not registering about 9.1 volts. Perfect. Good. Okay. Next thing to do now is going to be to get the circuit ready to go. So I'm going to turn this off for now when we're not using it. We always want to turn it off to save the battery so we don't have to run into another one of the situations. Here's the battery chassis. What we're going to do is we're going to put in the first battery here. Because if you notice, you see that metal bar that's attaching that side to that side? There is no metal bar on the other side. So we want to be able to hook in our clip right there. So we're going to put the battery here, the first one. Okay, so slide right in. Cool. I'm going to hook up one clip to right there. The side that's touching the battery and the other one. The other one to this. Spring. Great. And notice that our, our switch is open. We're not trying to put current through yet. I'm going to go over here now and look at my data sheet. We put one battery in. We put in battery number one. So the total potential difference with one battery is going to be 1.48 volts. And we'll do the same thing. 1.48 volts. 1.48 volts. Okay. Now we're going to go through each resistor and measure the potential difference over, over them and the current. So for resistor 1, we're going to plug in the battery. We're going to use our voltmeter to measure the potential difference. We're going to look at the ammeter for the current. We're going to do the same thing here for resistor number 2 and for resistor number 3. And here's our circuit. Got the battery going to the switch, to the ammeter, through one resistor. Then we've got two routes to go through. They must be in parallel. We've got a resistor here and a resistor here. Then it all comes back around. And if we look at our diagram, same thing. Battery to a switch to an ammeter to resistor 1. We've got a branch, so the parallel. Resistor 2 is on the left. Resistor 3 is on the right. Resistor 2 is on the left. Resistor 3 is on the right. All right. Quick note. Don't leave the switch on. Right, Mr. T? Right. Yeah, we don't want these resistors to burn out. If they have current going through them because we've got the switch closed and, and continue to be closed, even, even though we're not even taking any readings, we're just going to waste the battery and we'll get those resistors smoking, which I had that last year. Did you have one like that, Mr. T? Uh, I think I had a couple. Yeah, so don't leave the switch mm -hmm. closed. Close it, take your reading, then open it back up. All right. So here we are, we're going to close the switch and we're going to see what we get just for some readings on the ammeters. So okay. Spread them out here so you can take a look. So Let's look at, I'm going to look at the first, the first ammeter. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so so closing close the switch. switch. Here we go. Oh, wait. Why did it go backwards? Wait, can you open the switch real quick so we can see? Yep. Now close it again? Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it is going backwards. Wait a second. What's going on? Shouldn't it be going forwards? I Because having negative current. Wait, I bet you. Whole lot of that must mean the current's going backwards through it. What if we switch? Something. That maybe that must mean the current's going backwards. So if we swap these, wouldn't that make the current go forwards? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. If we swap these, and I guess this is a good time to look at our different settings. We've got a 50 milliamp, 500 milliamps, 5 milliamps, and then this is where we hook it back out to. 
So we're going to want to be on the lowest setting because these are higher settings. They're not going to give us any type of reading because we have a low current right now. Let's see what happens when we close it now. Oops. There we go. And oh, look at that. We're going forward again. Can you un pull it out again, Mr. T? All right, and then close it again. Yep. Sweet. All right, All right, so I think we're good. Now, but we have the other two the same. Oh, are you serious? Let me see. Oh, yeah, they're going backwards. Okay, so let's yeah. we'll swap these. We could just switch the battery. Oh, oh yeah, I like that right. idea too. So we can put this back. Since current is going through the circuit backwards for all three of them, if we switch the battery to go the opposite, that should have current going through the circuit. Right. Let's, let's, see. let's see. Forward, forward, forward. forward. Yes. Good. Right. Good work, sir. There you go. Good. Okay. Okay, so now I guess it's time to take some readings. So the readings here, we're going to look at the potential and the current across the first resistor. Then we're going to do it for the second and the third. So let's see how that's done. We're going to close the circuit. We'll be ready to go. And it's time to take the potential over the first resistor. So Mr. T is going to hold it with his fingers right on there. And you can even go like this. I'll be the fingers. You can even okay. just grab them and hold them like that. And look at that. We've got a potential of one ne negative. Hmm. What's that negative? Well, maybe it's the same problem that we had before. You might be right. What do we do instead? Try and switch them. Oh, OK. There we go. Oh, positive. Perfect. 1.19. All right. Awesome. So that's the resistance, or excuse me, that's the potential <laughs> over resistor number one. And we're going to pull that up. It was 1.19, right, sir? 1.119. Yeah. So we are right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's volts. And now we've got to figure out the current. And that's going to be right here. So if we close the switch right. again, let's see. It's about 5, let's see. Five milliamps because the this right here is oops I can't see it but we said this is 50 milliamps there you go 50 milliamps right there that means the largest number we're going to have is 50 milliamps and if we look 10 20 30 40 50 so we're in milliamps right now when we close the switch we're at five milliamps so that's going to be the current through the first resistor five milliamps. And then we're going to do the same okay. thing for the second and the third. So we'll come over here to, let's see, this is going to be the second route. Here's resistor number two. Mm -hmm. We can close the switch again, grab our voltmeter. Okay. We're going to go with resistor two. Resistor two. Oh, I got it switched again. Got it in negative again, so we just right. swap them. Cool. And it's 0.34 on that. 0.34, and then the current is about 2 milliamps. Okay. Okay, so we're going to undo the switch. We'll put 0.34 for resistor 2. Here. And the current was point or it was two milliamps. Cool. Okay. All right. There we go. And now time to do it for resistor number three. And here's where we'll take reading. So we close the switch again. Let's see what we got here. Um, there we go. Registering point three about point three four again. Okay. And then. Uh, current through this one looks to be about three milliamps. Okay. So about three milliamps for resistor number three and 0.34 volts for All right. resistor number three. All right. And so we're going to continue doing that, taking measurements, but this time we're going to put in two batteries. So let's see. We'll just hook that right in there. Mm -hmm. And we'll put in battery number two, which we already know the potential because we recorded it. And we're going to do the same thing again. Close the switch, take the potential over the resistor, measure, or excuse me, read 
the ammeter, and we'll do one real quick. So here we go. We're overloading. We must have more than two volts, and let's switch that. Okay. 2.23 volts, and so we'd write that down for resistor one okay. with two batteries. And we'll continue this process. When we come back, we'll, uh, we'll show you what we got. All right. Good. All right, welcome back. Now, so we took, we took our data, uh, got voltage across each resistor. We got the current at each point along mm -hmm. the circuit. Cool. Um, so there it is. So now we're going to disconnect the... And real quick, cells. when yeah. you've got four, notice how we've got the positive of one battery connected to the negative of the other battery. So when we hook these together, we've got to go from whatever this is, this is negative here to the positive there. So make sure when you're connecting these two battery sets together, you've got it right. Flipping them is going to cancel out your potential. All right. So now we're going to get rid of these. Notice the switch is open. Awesome. Keep it open. Don't close it. Don't leave it closed. Don't need this anymore. Okay. We're going to move on to the to the nine volt. The nine volt. How are we going to connect this, Mr. T? Um, you can just clip it into the uh, these little guys right here. Oh, oh, that's cool. Yep. That's easy. Not bad. Perfect. There we go. All right. And so we can just take our mm. our data. We just Same close the switch and do it, huh? Oh wait. Can you show me that again? Oh, it's going backwards again. What do we do? Reverse it. Oh. Yeah. This will happen a lot, so get used to it. Try and figure out which way it's supposed to go. Cool. There we go. All right. Let's okay. see. Nice. Okay. All right. So it's back on. All right. Let's get that last data point, and then we'll we'll come back and talk about what we're going to do with this. All right. So here we are. We've graphed. Oh, shoot. We haven't graphed yet. We have plotted data points. We're doing the table. Here's resistor one, resistor two, and resistor three. Notice we're doing I for the X, V for the Y. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight, and I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to pick the Scatter Plot option. Oh my goodness gracious. That looks like the holy grail of physics if I've ever seen one. Straight line. Yummy. Okay, I'm going to grab this thing right here. It says Move Chart. I'm going to move it to its own sheet. We can call this Resistor one. There it is. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'm going to double click on the points, right click on them, and I'm going to add a trend line. And linear, oh, it looks fantastic. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to display the equation on the sheet down here. See, we've got set intercept. I'm going to set the intercept to zero because if we have no voltage, we shouldn't have any current. I'm going to display the equation on the sheet as well. So here we go. This is the first one. Let me make this a little bigger. Uh, it was right there. Big, 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 big. Okay. We've got for resistor number one. Let me let me pull that out real quick. For resistor number one, here it is. We have y equals. 220.58 times x. Hmm. Let's see. On our y, we plotted voltage, potential difference. On our x, we plotted current. And if we can figure out, let me let me do this real quick. Let's see. Y is voltage. This is I. Maybe we can find it. Maybe there's a cooler I. Let's see if there's like times Roman numeral or something like that. Uh, I like the I with the top and the bottom. I think that's pretty cool. Let me see. Times New Roman. Yes, there we go. I with the top and the bottom. We've got V equals 220.58 times I. I wonder what that slope could mean, Mr. T, especially given the fact that resist, this is about resistor 1, and I should title my graph, so let me do that. Relationship between potential difference V versus 
current I in resistor number one. And then I should also label my, let's see, axis titles. I'll go right here. That'll give me an opportunity to do ten potential difference V as it in volts. And this is going to be current measured in amps. Perfect. That's good. V equals something something I. We got to figure out what that is. I bet I bet you if we looked at our data, we could really we could figure it out. It's, it can't be too hard. Okay. And that's how we do it for the second and the third resistor for, again. Oops. We'll grab, highlight, insert, scatter plot. Oh my gosh, another holy grail. <laughs> then we'll move the chart to a new sheet. Right click on the data points, add trend lines, etc., etc. Make sure you remember to set the intercept equal to zero and display the equation on the chart. And then we can go through making it nice and neat. Put a title, add in your axis labels, etc., etc. You should have three graphs for this for this lab. All right, Mr. T, what do you think? Is there anything else that we need to go through? I don't know. That looks pretty good. We that our... Same looks good to me too. Yeah. I think we're probably all set. I think we are as well. So uh, let's see. But we just need to clean up. Clean up. Clean up, and we got to sign off too. We got to do our right. little Something. see you, see you later, right? Yeah. So good. Mr. T, are you gonna do it? No. All right. <laughs> this is us signing off. We're gonna clean up and uh, good luck. Yeah. If you didn't understand what was going on in the video, please rewind it. Watch it again. Take notes. A lot going on here, so yep. get it together. And the more prepared you are coming into the lab, the less time you're going to waste. And you don't want to get through with the time and have to schedule more time because you didn't get all of it done. And that's what will happen if you don't come in prepared. So, all right. That's it. We'll see you. Okay.